Welcome to Grip Lock Foundation's weekly disc golf podcast. Uh, I'm Trevor, joined with Connor hey. today. Uh, if you're a big Hunter fan, don't click away. Nope, don't. He will be here shortly. Uh, basically, the way this podcast is going to roll is Hunter and I, last night, immediately after Champions Cup, uh, Sunday night, filmed our recap for that. It is now Monday morning at the time of recording this, and he is gone. He is gone forever. No, he's gone for the week. So we took that care of that. So we're going to start with our Patreon questions of the week, and then we're going to jump into the recap. We're going to do a boop, 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 tri- time traveling, go to Sunday night. It's a fresh reaction, and we did our whole recap for Champions Cup. Not going to miss that. Then we're going to boop, 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 hop back to now. Like... Yes. Now we're going we're to hop back to the present, and we are going to finish with Trevor's Trivia, and then that's going to be how the show's going to work. But Heck yeah. we're going to start with our... Heiser Club question of the week. If you are not a member of the Heiser Club and you're wondering what that's all about, well, basically our, our Heiser Club is our Patreon program. Uh, members can join with a free trial right now. You can get 30 days free. You can try out a whole month of all the benefits for free. You can get discounts. You get exclusive content. One of the things they get is an exclusive weekly podcast called The Mailbag where they ask us questions and we answer every single one. Uh, and so these are some of the great questions we got. And uh, I will say to convince you even further about the Heiser Club, uh, it the funnest part on our side is that whenever we do the mailbag, we like know the Heiser Club well, members. I now. feel like I'm personal friends. Yeah, with most seriously, of them. because like we have full on conversations through their questions, and yeah. like we know their personalities now, and, it's, and we know their names. It's very fun. I feel like they're our friends. It's very true. They are. Um, so the first question here, I'm, we're gonna do two today. We're gonna have a bonus question. Um, Because we had a lot of good ones. So first question is from Jonathan Svedson. And he said, aside from disc choice. Yeah, that's what we call him. See, we're friends. (laughs) Aside from disc choice, what do you think is the worst thing beginners pick up from watching pros play? Mm -hmm. This is a good question because obviously disc choice is the number one. Uh, because pros make discs do things that uh, normal people can't, especially like more stable discs. Yeah, like whenever Paul McBeth used to Heiser flip and turn over the crap out of a T bird, and you're it like, doesn't oh, do that. I need yeah. that disc, <laughs> that like Heiser flip disc, and you pick up a T bird, and you're like, this is a Firebird. Exactly. So yeah, I would answer this question by saying um, two things probably. Number one would be form, but let me explain. I think there is. I think I know where a you're good going. and a bad way to like pick because like I learned to play disc golf by copying Will Schuster's form because he's a very basically fundamental f- disc golf form um, or at least he definitely did back in the day when he was in his prime like very classic form I mean you can tell because Gannon Burr kind of added on from that and look what he's doing um, so there are certain players that it's great to imitate but the problem is there are some players in disc golf just like in any sport there are guys who are able to overcome not really a great looking form or sometimes maybe hard to execute form mm-hmm. and they're able to overcome that and be really good but it's not necessarily going to be easy to imitate from the start let me give you an example Matty O that would be a good example um, I would say uh, Feldberg used to have pretty interesting form uh, Kevin Jones has kind of interesting form. There are guys, certain guys who like, they might become your favorite player and you might want to imitate them, but that might not be the best place to go form wise. Can uh, I add to that? Yeah. I would say one more thing with form, like copying a pro's form is also look at their body type compared to yours. The, excellent point. Because like point. I have spent a lot of time trying to copy like Eagles form or Simon's form or Will Shoestrick's form, but they're all tall, lanky guys. Yeah. And I'm Very not true. a tall, lanky guy. I'm more of a, a short we'll say stout to make me feel better, but a short chubby guy. You're not chubby. And so it's like, um, I, like it's following like the form of like shorter guys I've noticed um, makes me feel like, makes me throw a lot better because I've been like going through this thing lately where I'm trying to follow that kind of like, uh, like Simon, Eagle, uh, Gannon, close to the hip yeah. kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think that form might work better for, don't take, don't take this as what you're listening to about form. But for me, I've noticed that I think that form might work better for like a taller guy. Well, if I keep my, like if I look at somebody closer to my body type, now Drew Gibson's ripped. So he's not that close to my body type, but as in not, height and like ripped. height, broad shoulders, stuff like that. Um, where he kind of goes more elbow up disc. and like Garrett Gurthy more elbow up. And yeah. even like Paul is a little bit more like arm, more straight less like down at his side yeah i think that helps that works better for me so like maybe just like don't copy if you're if you're a short guy or just like a like not tall skinny guy don't maybe don't go copy eagles form 
because I mean it might not work for Good your body point. type. I would say the only other thing that I would add to that is um, the only other thing you could copy that would not be great is shot selection. And I say that mostly like if you're a beginner, don't try to throw a ton of complex shots like cut yeah. rollers, things of that nature that that look really fun, but they're really not super effective unless you're really good at them. In a practice round, yes. Or yeah. try those shots to see what you can like do. Like grenades sometimes. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> But in but in like if you're doing tournaments, like throw what you know you can throw. Yeah. But I guess you gotta figure out what you can throw. It's true. Um okay, so that was that question. A great question there uh, from Jonathan. He's a loyal member. Another loyal member here, Shay Stevens. He asked um, Shay Stevens something we've kind of talked about before, but he said, is there any way to peace peaceably Divorce Innova from USDGC. While we can't ignore the fact that the event would not have even grown to be the major it is without Innova's backing, it doesn't feel right that a manufacturer gets to determine which events serve as qualifiers and which don't. I do find it interesting that like this has been a topic for quite some time now, and what has become the like the thing that is like really bringing it to people's attention is the qualifier selection because Innova has made it so apparent that they're going to like prioritize their events or like the ones that they are presenting as qualifiers. So sometimes you'll see a silver series, get one over an elite series, mm -hmm. um, which is weird. And I do think it's like, yeah, it's like an issue, but the problem is USDGC, if it were owned or operated by anybody else other than Innova, it would not even be half of the major that it is. It's the best disc golf event that exists and so I'm willing to, and I'm not normally this way, but I am willing to like give a lot of slack just because of the fact that it's important for our sport to have that event in the way it's run right now. Like it, it is like, it's such a future of disc golf type thing when you go there and you see how it's all operated. So, you know, I don't like the situation with the qualifiers, but it's not like it's world ending. I'm not seeing like it's not like I'm seeing, you know, world renowned players getting like screwed out of spots they should have, you know, they're still qualifying. So yeah, that's kind of how I feel about that right now. Yeah. I think that that makes sense. I, I, yeah, I don't think that it's, I don't think it's really an option to get Innova out of it. I think they kind of own the event. Yeah. Point. It's, it's, you need like Innova has a lot of resources. That event has a lot of history. It, that is going to be a point of contention as years go on and on. It won't really ever be like, really contentious though until other majors are elevated to that level and then we can start talking about like mm, you know what's going on there but i will say under Innova, it's still a run well event i mean there's not really a, i mean a ton of complaints about usg oh no no it's so, it's a beautiful event it's awesome there's no yeah yeah it rocked it's worth it's worth whatever the downsides of them owning yeah, it for right now yeah, in particular run, the people that is like a passion project of the people that do that event and it shows yeah, so. it, it rocks. Um, so that was our those were our Heiser Club questions of the week. If you're mm -hmm. interested in joining the Heiser Club, remember you can do a 30 day free trial. You can go to patreon.com slash foundation disc golf and check that out. It's a really cool program. And I feel like our Patreon family has really been blossoming lately. The mailbag is always a fun time, so make sure to check that out. Um, we're gonna hop into Champions Cup now. Our full recap, Hunter and I from the studio. This is jumping back in time to last night, Sunday night. We pretty much right after the final putt went in, we drove over here and filmed this. So we're going to get into all the storylines there. Let's hop right into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Champions Cup just wrapped up. It is Sunday night. And you know what? I'm going out of town tomorrow. I'm not going to be here, as you probably realize with the rest of Grip Locks. We were like, let's lock this thing in. Let's get our initial reactions this is in the, the booth. Freshest, the freshest reaction we've had since like when we did the USDGC thing. Um, now, I will quickly say my feet hurt very bad. And if you didn't watch the companion stream you might not know why yeah um but i'm in pain right now but it's okay beauty is pain um all right yeah turn my battery percentage on because that thing drained this fpl let's start with there start with the fpl there's only one storyline to cover chris and tatar just did one of the more unfathomable things at a major she went wire to wire but not only did she go wire to wire she won by 14 strokes. Gosh, dang. 14 strokes over second place owned Scoggins, which we both predicted correctly. By the way, 1-2. We are goaded. We did predict Missy Gannon to come in third, and um, she did not. She came in 17th. That's okay. Um, Win some, you lose some. Katrina Allen was able to finish in third. I didn't think that she was going to be able it's to. It's so inconsequential, though, isn't it? Talking about second and third. Now, here's here's something that is fascinating. I'm just, I just fact-checked this. Okay. Chris and Tatar, after round two. Mm-hmm could have just went par even even round three and four would have still won the tournament by three strokes yeah 
She won the tournament after two rounds. She was at 16 under par. A, Owen Scoggins came in second at 13 this under. This is a very relieving win for me because, you know, we've really leaned really heavily into the Kristen Tatar is the only option. Like, she's, of course, going to win. She's the best by far. Like, we've leaned into that pretty good now. And to have this happen, which is, like, just the epitome of everything we've been saying and most people have been saying, not just us, it feels good to be validated and like, yes, Kristen Tatar is in fact much better than all the other FPO players, and it showed, and she dominated them. Like, I it, mean, it was it yeah. was not a contest very early, pretty much from from. I mean, like round after one, round two, it was not a contest anymore. It round just, one, you had her at nine, you had Cap Merch at seven. The problem was you had Cap Merch at seven, Haley King at six. Um, but at least in my opinion, when that first round came in, I wasn't really counting on Cap Merch to push her. So in yeah. my mind, you had her, Kristen at nine and Haley at six. And Haley even, I was like, man, it's going to be tough for her to drop down. So really had Cat at five well, is where my head went. And historically, I think Kristen's second round in like especially the three round events has been the one where she might, uh-oh, she played really bad. Now she has to do some work. But then when the second round came in, it was kind of like, hmm. I mean, literally. Well, the second round, yeah, she went seven under. And like I was kind of expecting, Cap Merch and Haley King, two under, both of them. Yeah. So that's when she really kind of opened this thing up a little bit more. Dumb. And after round three, so she went nine under, seven under, eight under. It was done. It was over. It was 12 and, strokes come into today. Gosh, man. And she shot three under today. Here's the fascinating thing. That three under, still the hot round today. <laughs> she didn't have a and round didn't that have wasn't to do the anything. hot round. And here's the thing that's frightening for those... Like, I, if you're playing against Kristen right now, here's what's frightening. What's frightening is, in, in at Kristen at her worst, is I'm going to throw a pretty solid chip forehand around the course, putt pretty well, and just kind of beat you that way. Kristen at her best, which is what you're seeing right now, is she's going to put the lights out. And not only is her forehand just beautiful right now, but she's throwing backhand hyzer flips, lacing fairways. Like, I mean, she's shredding. And she has ultimate confidence. And how could you not have ultimate yeah. confidence right now? Circle 1X putts Incredible. on the tournament, 96%. What was that? S Circle 1X putting. 96%? 96%. I mean, are you kidding me? You're not beating that. Like, she was... Oh, my god. The gosh, thing that we saw 96. out there... The thing that she we missed, saw... She missed, like, one? She was, <laughs> she was hungry from the get. You could tell this was one that I think really upset her missing, especially yeah. the way she missed last year, oh, the way yeah. she lost it. You could tell, like, this is what she, she, this is her tournament. This is all she was focused on. I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to see if I can go round by round on my phone. I know you can on um, a computer. Um, ah, dang it, I don't think I can. I know she was 100% C1X round one. I think she might have been round two as well. Um, so I'd be well, curious where that, missed, like, one or I'd two be plots. curious where that one or two came from. She was also 95% I think I saw scramble. Her, I think I saw her miss one today. She had one, so, so she had one bogey. Going if you include Blue Ridge Championship yeah. and this entire tournament, only one bogey across the board. Bro. Blue Ridge Championship, very impressive because there's, there's a ton of OB out there's there. There's a lot of OB, yeah. This course, also very impressive because there's a lot of chances for bogeys. A lot of tight lines. Um, so one bogey there. What was her scrambling percentage? Uh, 95%. Yeah. Well, she only didn't get up and down once. That's awesome. 76% um, <laughs> fairway hits. I mean, the, the only stat that she was outside, she, was, she had two stats outside the top five. Across the board. We're talking yeah. even gained T to green, gained putting, gained circle two, all that. There's two stats outside the top five. She was sixth, circle one in regulation at 32%, which that one's kind of surprising, to be honest. Um, and she was 12th in circle two putts at 17%. She's got a random stat a lot of which, times. Yeah, so... I mean, yeah, it was a clinic. Kristen Tatar is... I mean, she if is you're who the, we thought she was. If Yeah, she is who we thought she was. And if you are the rest of the field right now, like, it's just... There's just a lot of pressure... What's going to happen, what can happen with a player this dominant is the Tiger Woods, Paul McBeth effect where all, a player gets so much like so high elevated above the field that they start winning just because the rest of the field's intimidated. Like yeah, the rest of the field's you're scared. on you're on the final card to last day and you see Chris in there and you just kind of already you're already beaten. Well, like that was the, like what was happening with Paul in 2015. Exactly. Where if he was close to the lead yeah it was over it's like it if, over. if you were looking you at your score you and you saw you see Kristen you know take off two strokes in the yeah. first five holes sometimes you're just collapsed now Kristen is set up for unprecedented domination this year and I like I feel like we say things pretty bold on this show knee jerk things but this doesn't feel like that I no. feel like this is one that we're not going to look silly at the take. end of the year yeah like I feel like we're going to look back at this season and I mean was it her fourth win is that what I saw? I think so. I think it's her fourth win of the year. If you count silver events, I guess. 
Um, because what does she have now? She has. Um, I can click on. I him. mean, what does she? She's only lost like once. She lost twice, I believe. She lost twice, or it was one of the ones that was a she wasn't at. Let's go. So she won Champions Cup. She won Blue Ridge. Uh, I believe she won Music City. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that's three. One silver event. Texas State. She came in second. And she didn't win Vegas either. Open in Austin. She came in fifth. And Waco. She won. She won Waco. Yeah. So that's wins. her. That's her season because she didn't wins. play Vegas. Um, she's she, really the last two events is when I'm I've started to, like early in the season because well, Blue Ridge there wasn't anyone there per se but it yeah. wouldn't have mattered. Oh, it was clinic. it was one of those things. Yeah. Early in the season you kind of felt like yeah this will be like Kristen of last year she's gonna win a ton. The last couple events here and, and this one in particular it's like oh my goodness like what is anybody going to do to stop her? And uh, I think we, we saw some impressive play from other players. Like we saw some good rounds out of cap merch. We saw own Scoggins, you know, stay up there. We saw Holland Hanley, but yeah. the problem is she just left him in the dust. Well, yeah, that's the problem is like impressive is relative because you had someone yeah. destroying the course, right? Where, like impressive well, wasn't impressive. We'll anymore. get to MPO in a second, but it's a similar, it's actually a similar situation where it's like, man, a lot of really awesome numbers bunched in there, but too bad the guy in first or the girl in first is way up there. Yeah. Like, so uh, the, what's impressive, like doesn't even matter anymore um now the other storyline that i think we have to touch on no matter what is Paige pierce 12 over for the tournament missed cash um first time at least at a major missing cash since 2011 i think the pro tour showed it ever since 2011 but i don't think that one's yeah, right i wish i could find i think it's better. first time made in a major but regardless very uncharacteristic she does have i believe it is tendonitis and her right rotator cuff um and she's starting i can't believe she's playing with that she's man. starting physical therapy now she was told not to play Champions Cup, decided to play anyways because yeah, she wanted to it chance to defend her title. Major. She lost it uh, at Waco in 2020. Um, so. Because I think uh, she she basically was told not to play this event, but played it anyways because she wanted to play a major. rotator cuff sounds like probably one of the worst That's things. one of the worst disc golf injuries oh, I think you could have. Oh, gosh. So Paige is out of it for an unknown amount of time. Um, Katrina Allen, I mean, she came top three. Trina lost by it. 16 strokes. Doesn't really seem like she's gonna wants to win this year either. I mean, yeah, it's well, all she has to, a win, Vegas. But I, I feel like the next person to beat uh, Kristen Tatar is gonna be Holland Handley. I have this sneaky feeling that the next one to beat her is because I feel like that's the game we now have to play with FPOs. So who's the next person to beat Kristen? Could be, or maybe it's Val Mandahano. <laughs> that's true. Val has not made her come on, back Val, yet. Come on, Val. We're all we're all, we're all hoping you. for you to come back um, strong. Now on the MPO <laughs> side, now I would be interested in this stat because correct me if I'm wrong. We just had both players went wire to wire. MPO I and think FPO. So yeah, I think so. Isaac Robinson popped off with an 11 under round one. I was believe he tied after round one. Uh, Isaac, let's go round one. No, second hot was a 10. And I, think, I don't think he ever two, gave he up the lead. Loaded in round two, I think. Round two, he shot eleven. Silas Schultz shot twelve. Brought it to within, I believe, one or two, but he didn't have the lead. Yeah. And then he, round he three, he took it. off. Yeah. Gannon Burr tied him at twelve, but yeah, yeah. So he went. Wire so both wire. both players went wire to wire. What a weird major! I'll tell you, man. Champions Cup so far has been like the the story of Champions Cup. I mean, we had FPO last year, but then the other three like winter circumstances have been like a story of like just pretty dominant, solid golf, like just taking it home. Has well, it been super dramatic? Isaac Robinson. One of the best performances ever, which is Going crazy. into this weekend, Trevor and I put the line to win at 36 under. Okay, well, Yeah, we felt pretty good about 36. I felt like I originally said around 32. Which was darn we close like, if it weren't for Isaac. And then we got to 36. What 40 I mean? was unfathomable. I think yeah. someone even, Nico might have even been like, well, what, like, do you think someone get to 40? And I was like, no, averaging double digits yeah, out there, like, that's seemed not. pretty good. And Isaac Robinson won at 40. Um, Eagle McMahon and Nicholas Antela came in tied for seconds. So they round out the top three at 35 under. But, like, this was a very weird, let's just, I'm going to yeah. just read down the leaderboard. A lot of very, very, very notable names that were playing the event missing from the top 10. Yeah. So let's just read this. So first off, we'll talk about Isaac Robinson's play here in a second. So don't worry. We're not glazing over his first major championship. Isaac Robinson wins. Eagle McMahon, Nicholas Antela tie for second. Silas Schultz, uh, fourth place, yeah. solo fourth. Matteo, Mason Ford, tied fifth. Aiden Scott, Chris Clemens, Gannon Burr, Vino Makala, tied seventh. That rounds out your top 10. Yeah. There's a pretty mixed bag of, of, leader, of a leaderboard. I mean, is there... There's like, what, maybe... Maybe two players that are in the world top ten in that top ten. Yeah, it was Matty O. Is he in the world top ten? He might have snuck out. I know Gannon Burr is, but yeah. so there might only be one. 
What have they updated the world rankings? I'm, uh, I'm not sure. Look at you can probably just look right there. Click rankings. See if this is through. Oh uh, yeah, through Champions Cup. Ricky Gain- <laughs> Gannon Gannon Oh, the world rankings. World rankings are suck. so bad. Ricky Wysocki just took first place back by sitting for out. for not playing. I can't. Gannon Burr that. dropped a second. Oh my god. That's, that's so dumb. That is so Gannon stupid. came seventh at a major. He beat everyone below him. And he loses the spot. And he loses the that spot. That is the fatal flaw with that system. Man. Eagle McMahon's in the top ten and he came in, in the top ten as well. So Where, you have Eagle McMahon and Gannon. Isaac I, Robinson I, snuck into the top ten now. Okay. He moved up four spots. I mean, he went a major it, it's something to be said. Um, That's ridiculous. That's sickening. I'm not looking at that anymore. But anyways, um, Calvin Heimberg, I think it's a big storyline from this weekend, finished in 16th place. Very un-Calvin-like. Yeah, he, he was like good at times, but never really could put it together. I think this course, I've just decided, this course is very unique from a lot of the others on tour that we see. Um, the lack of OB, the true woods golf style that it has. So I think we just kind of get a bit of a different looking leaderboard. I think it was a fun leaderboard. It was cool. Um, you know, I, I think we can expect like, I think we now can pretty much expect that Isaac Robinson is that guy in the woods. And yeah. now, and if you remember, this is now twice. He's won now two big, two big wins. Ottawa Wild last year and this one where both of these wins has been nobody was beating that guy that week. Yeah. Like, because Ottawa was the same way. It was like he was making everything. He was hitting all his lines. It was like there was nobody that could beat him that week. Like, he was just unbeatable. And this is the same thing. He just never was slipping up. I, I mean, he just dominated. And he was hitting all the lines. His putting is just ridiculous. That's what like, I look at. 90, it's silly. Now, here's a fascinating one. He was 94% C1X putting, 10th place in MPO. That is crazy. What? That what? is crazy. <laughs> There's was, nine guys that put it better. What was the C2? Uh, C2 is 33%, 34th in MPO. That actually surprised me a lot because I know his, one, uh, one his, of the rounds he was 100%. His best stat, he was first place in scramble at 92%. Mm. First Which I place, think that speaks to putting. First place circle one in regulation at 58%. See, that's that's what's interesting about this is you know his putting has always been one of his main strengths and clearly 94% C1X. Like he wasn't losing strokes on the putting green at all. He was gaining them. Yeah. Um, but circle one in regulation, first place, guess what that means? If you're a good putter and you're first place in that category, you're going to win most likely because that means he was throwing the disc that well. And yeah. his angle control... And gap hitting was, That's what was so ridiculous. Yeah. Every time the disc came out of his hand, he was just perfectly hitting lines. And the way he was controlling his turnover angles, there's so many shots on that course where you're, I, I didn't even realize how many, where you are throwing um, turnover shots that have to flatten out. Uh, so yeah, many of and them. He was doing it and he was just beautifully. money with them. Oh my gosh. They said he was throwing an FX4 out there a lot for his hyzer flips, apparently. Apparently that was his go-to out there. But man, he was, he was nailing those two. I mean, Prodigy's got to be ecstatic right now i know i mean they got gannon burr winning yeah. was it last week or two weeks ago open at austin um gannon burr winning uscgc obviously isaac robinson now they own the last here. they own the last two majors in the mpo division they're kind of in and, and they're doing it on the backs of young talent yeah i mean they gotta love the fact that you have isaac robinson tapping out and he all of his best friends are running in and it's just prodigy logos everywhere well, except for Gavin Babcock. Except for Gavin Babcock, but <laughs> RIP. you couldn't see his logo. He was running, running up the back. But you it's have true. his brother, also Ezra Robinson, also sponsored yeah, by Prodigy. Man. You had Gannon running in Prodigy. And they're like the in back. Prodigy's Alden backyard, Harris. too. In Georgia yeah. down there, man. I mean, this Ooh. was a big tournament for Prodigy. I'm not going to lie to you. I'll say, yeah. It, because this is the other thing, is Prodigy, via this Gannon Burr lawsuit, has been getting crapped on for inconsistent plastic, inconsistent discs, yeah. yada, yada, yada. That is a hard argument to make when you watch how their plastic is competing at the top level. Yeah. Now, I understand where the argument comes from. I'm not sitting here saying right, that right. I don't. But I'm saying if you're just someone entering the, the game. The best of their plastic is clearly really see, good. <laughs> and you see Isaac Robinson playing the most consistent disc golf that we've seen possibly ever. Like, the, this four really rounds good. was incredible. Like, yeah. there, I'm trying to think there's maybe a few, a handful of shots that you were like, ah, he missed his line there. Yeah. Ah, that disc didn't do what he expected it to do there. This dude was on a different City. level. We definitely uh, we got to give a huge shout out to Silas Schultz. Absolutely, got a got a got a, He was one round away. That third round was uh, was a bad one. Not, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't atrocious. bad. He still shot like a few under. A few but. under, but he was one round away from really being it. And today made a huge push. Yeah, 
Silas Schultz, I'll tell you, this he has always been very talented, and he's just starting to commit more time to the tour. I never really knew how to gauge Silas Schultz. I really like Silas Schultz, but I never knew how to gauge his game. Crazy arm talented, like unlimited arm talent. Um, consistency off the tee is like a thing for him, and then putting has been a big thing. But he kind of found his putter a little bit and was just mashing lines, and this is what he's capable of. So that's going to be somebody we need to look at more uh, cause that, what a confidence booster oh, to go yeah. out there. And today, I mean, he was nine through 10 at one point. He almost was 11 through 12. Ele- yeah. He almost aced 11. He, he, he missed hole five, but other than that, he got 11 of the first 12 holes. Yeah. He was, he was really making it almost what seemed like an impossible push. And yeah. It, it, he it, got to within two strokes at one point. Yeah. He was the only person that was like making this round interesting. It was a heck of a um, Nicholas him. was pushing a little bit. Yeah, uh, solid event for Nicholas. This was a tournament of young talent. Yeah. I mean, Eagle McMahon was realistically the only like, Matty O is the only one carrying the older guy. That's true. But like <laughs> Eagle McMahon, I was going to say, was like the only expected name pushing the lead at any point. I think we could, I mean, I think we could have expected Isaac Robinson. I, I think it, Isaac Robinson makes sense, but I don't think anyone expected Yeah, it wasn't. Him. I think like if the way momentum have, was, we weren't expecting yeah, him. If someone would have said his name before and been like, I think Isaac Robinson could win, I'd be like, yeah, you know yeah, what? Yeah, he could, but yeah. I wasn't going to think of that. No, it wasn't. It, well, it wasn't anybody's first pick. It, when he had the hot round, first round, it wasn't my shocking. jaw wasn't on the floor. Yeah, it wasn't shocking. He's when a, he was still in the lead second round, my jaw was on the floor. Yeah. Once he pulled away the third round, I was like, is yeah. this dude going to go wire to wire? Like, I didn't very, think he had it in him because like impressive. doing it at Idlewild was one thing. But doing it at a major, yeah, it was really impressive. whole different thing. Super steely and looked solid the whole day today. Um, I mean, I think he came out and birdied one, and he no, he parred one. He did par one, but you could tell at least he, from the only what I was looking. Stretch, bad stretch he had was when he had some pars in the middle of his round. Though. But what it looked like to me was opening the round up. It seemed like he was kind of just like in cruise control, playing conservative, and at least from watching, it looked like a round hole twelve. When he, the the coverage made note that he was checking scores, that yeah. was around the point Silas Schultz got to within two. It looked like then he was like, "Oh, okay, let me put the foot on the gas," and he just whoop, got four, pulled away. Got four, got four of the, next, the next five. five. Yeah, I like that on coverage. I don't know if that was actually what was going on in his head, but that's what it seemed. It seemed like he was in just comfort mm-hmm. cruise control mode, and then was like, "Okay, I need to put my foot on the gas again and end this thing." Yeah, and he did it. It was really yeah, it was really good um, course management on his part to kind of know when things got tight and not freak out and just kind of slowly pull back away a bit and threw some awesome shots down the stretch to like ensure his win but I mean that's how you do it right there like you go in with a seven shot lead finish the day with a five shot lead like that is like almost that's what you gotta do that is perfect playing with a lead golf which is not something that many people can do especially when you look down the leaderboard and you got all these guys that just are hungry nipping at your heels yeah it was um yeah it was masterful performance I almost tweeted this yesterday and then I said it to you, and we both kind of didn't tweet it for the similar reason. Um, but, like, after his Idlewild win, now his win here, it feels like Isaac Robinson is kind of the new Chris Dickerson. Feels feels similar I mean, to me. I understand people might say, well, Chris Dickerson hasn't gone anywhere. Um, I mean, he, he came in 11th at this tournament. You know, he still is a rel- relevant name by all means. But, like, Chris Dickerson used to be like, okay, we're coming to the woods. You better have him in your top three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That kind of feels like Isaac Robinson. Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't play a ton of wooded courses on tour at all, but um, I can tell you for free, regardless of the fact that he's a defending champion as well, when we go to Idlewild, guess who we're picking to win? It's probably going to be Isaac Robinson. Yeah. Because how do you pick against the guy? Like, he's unstoppable in the woods. If he plays like he just played, it's hard to say that. It's hard to say someone could beat him. Yeah. To be honest. And it's such a it's such a flex to be able to say, like, you're the guy in the woods. Because, like, it's so hard to play in the That's woods. That's the toughest golf. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unreal performance from him. Now, uh, one other storyline I think that's important. We talked, we touched on Gannon, had a, a solid weekend out there. Nothing special. Tied for seventh. Calvin yeah. Heimberg slipped a little bit. Paul McBeth. Yeah. This is a tournament that, again, you know, coming in, I think that this was a, a chance at, like, okay, let's get the season going. Major championship. It's at a course he's very comfortable with, very confident in. He shot 16 under there just last year. Never was able to really get anything together. Not at all. Ended up in a tie for 20th at 23 under par. Total 17 strokes out of the lead. Mm -hmm. I think, at least in my opinion, it's safe to say Paul's having a slow start. Yeah, Paul needs to get something going. I would say say the warning bells might start ringing. I I think that... The tough part is he's going to go to Europe. 
here yeah. in a few weeks. And well, yeah, he's going to get wins over there. Yeah, but like, I say that might actually help his case. Maybe I don't know. I I feel like in the fir- for the first time ever, Paul's name slips my mind a little bit during these events. Like I have him star on my U disc with some other players, so like I see him there. But you know, I, I don't know. There, I, I think it's and it's less about his game and more about just the emerging superstars we have right now. Yeah, you've got Gannon and Calvin playing out of their minds. Simon reborn. You know, Eagles back. I think that that's kind of like changed that narrative a bit, but like, yeah, I, I, I think mean, in the UDISC world rankings, which obviously we just laughed at them because they still have Ricky one. Yeah. So we got to take this with a grain of salt. They have Paul slipped all the way down to six now. Yeah. I, I mean, he started to fade off the, the leaderboard and you know, it is like, he still can win any given week. He's a guy who can win, which like just being able to say that is good. Cause like there are some guys who might start slipping from relevance. Say a Kevin Jones starts to slip a little bit and you're like, you get more worried because Kevin Jones isn't like a guy who's proven to be a dominant winner necessarily. Yeah. Um, Paul, somebody with that kind of history, you know, in the back of your mind, yeah, any given event he could go out and win. So you're not quite as ready to just like freak out, but very slow start. I'm I'm sure it's starting to eat him up. Um, you know, I, I'm I you know I know he's not happy with what's going on. I don't think that he could ever be. I don't think that Paul will play disc golf very long when he's not competing for wins. I do not think he will. No, so, that could be an interesting talking point because I mean, obviously, we still have we still have or what seven years in his ten year contract. Yeah, I mean, he, and he's still competitive. Like it, it's not. We don't need to be freaking out or anything. Um, well, here's what I'm because he's still finishing, you know, twentieth. Like ooh. we had a, I had a revelation today because I was I was composing a tweet after Kristen's win, and I wrote in there she's one win shy of her career Grand Slam, yeah, which is the European Open for Kristen, mm-hmm. right? Odds are she'll win it this year because her main competition out there, to be honest with you, I think is Paige Pierce, and at this point we don't know if Paige Pierce will be back at the European Open, yeah. Uh, but really, what is competition to Kristen Tatar anymore at this point? Doesn't seem like anything. But one thing that I think is fascinating is disc golf has established four majors now. Yes. Will those four majors be the four majors five years from now? Who knows? Hopefully. If these four majors stay, which it seems like that's the intention for these four majors to stay, if these are the four majors, Paul needs a Champions Cup to have the career Grand Slam. Yeah. Which is a weird spot because he's won every major under the sun. He won all five majors there were in 2015, yet the career grand slam with the new majors eludes him. It is funny. It, it's funny. And like, we, I don't want to overreact with things like this because we are talking about such a small, like a young sport. And like, like you said, like if I had to actually bet money on, will these be the four majors 10 years from now, maybe even, yeah, 10 years from now, I'd probably say no. Which one do you think goes? Um, well, I think the question it depends on the like how the question is. If they are if they retain I would say a switch of ownership of major warrants a change of major cuz like if USDGC I'm saying like the history books. Like if like USDGC changed the exists, name, I would say that like the Aussie Open is gone. Period. Yeah. That was a major. That's more There I'm will saying, always like, be a US Open tournament. I would you know what's funny is the one that could get bumped would be for a different reason than you might think. I think Worlds could get That's where bumped, my head was. but it could add in a new fourth. I think Worlds could end up being, being a, a, above a major if they want to yeah. keep it that. Um, and it could add in a new it's fourth. it's weird where it is right now. I, so, that, but, so that being said, I think like the whole Paul thing, and this is going to happen for like disc golf is going to change so much in the next hundred years, let's just say, to where there will always be like, oh, well, they didn't win this because then they added this. And like, that is just how things work. Like guys won Super Bowls, but when they were still called NFL championships, when they weren't called the Super yeah. Bowl yet. Like the guys won, you know, like the World Series back in the day used to be different. There, there, there are all these different things and you have to just consider the context. So really when you're making the, if you're talking about, oh, who's the greatest later and who had the career grand slam, it will be a fair point to be like, well, Paul never got the champions cup, but it didn't come in until he was 32 years old. Like there, there are, will always be something like that, but it is interesting. And I think it'll, I think with that being said, you know, if I, I now that here'd be, the, I'd be interested to ask Paul. And I think, I think he would still say he would rather have a world title or U.S. title over Champions Cup. I oh, think, absolutely. I think he still values them more, 
But I'm sure there's a part of him that really wants that championship. Well, just, think, to, just to say he's won that one too. I was gonna say I think that if you were to ask him, like, a, if anyone has an argument against the career Grand Slam, it's Paul because, because obviously he's won. The, I think he won the Japan Open when he was a major, but he's definitely won the Aussie Open. Calling a piece yeah. What was the five that year? European, World, USCGC. Well, you know what's interesting about these one course majors is with Worlds and I mean European Open. I guess is one course major too. We only have one that rotates right now, which is interesting. Um, but with Worlds, it always rotates, so you always have that like. Well, yeah, it was at their course that year. Like it was kind of like for instance, if Paul wins at New London, people will be saying that for sure. Um, but there's always like with Rick, we always say he can never get it done at Winthrop. Like he. It's that course. And like with Paul, you could say, and I, I'm sure Paul probably has a Hall of Fame classic. Yes. Um, so it's not like he's ever won on that course. It's a little bit different, but it's a little bit special when it's like, oh, well, they could never get it done at the major at WR. An interesting point is he lost Worlds to Rick when Worlds was at WR. Yeah. Like um, that, that's something that sticks a little bit more. But like it's such a course that plays to Paul's game that it is a fascinating Yeah. I mean, well, he shot 16 under there last year. Yeah. And we'll, we'll say that until you're sick of it. But like yeah. clearly. I, like we know that Paul's game is just not at its best right now. No. So, but I think I think if you were if he were to answer like that whole career Grand Slam thing, it, he his easiest answer is like he probably just wants a Champions Cup so that that's not even a, a chance to be an argument. Right? It's like yeah, well if I win that, then like you know you could almost say I'm the only one with a real career Grand Slam because I've won every major under yeah. the sun. The majors are tricky, man. Because I mean you have you have Rick the you know one of the definitely a top two best player in the world over the last decade and he has yet to win a u.s title and like there's something to always be said about that well also with rick has rick won a european open mm, i don't know that, i don't think so so like rick only ha- is, is world's the only major rick has won i need to look this up <sighs> we have to fact check that i'm gonna fact check it really quick oh like it on stat mando that'll be easy well, no, i can just go to wins and sort by major that'll also be easy um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that that that's a narrative to be. Well, the narrative with Rick, regardless of anything else, is he hasn't won a major since 2017, yeah. and he's not getting younger. He's not getting younger. Yeah. Plus, you got to be able to play majors to win them. Also true. So he has an Aussie Open. Um, when that was a major, mm-hmm. he so he's won a bunch of majors, but the only one that's still around is Worlds. So he won the PDGA Championship in 2011. That was his first major win. Um. The Japan Open in 2014, European Masters, but not the European Open. European Born Masters is, was kind of like European Open, though. Um, this Golf World Tour event, then Worlds in 2016, then he won Aussie Open when that was a major in 2017. You know, I didn't even realize I was a major and I was at it. Aussie Open in 2017 so, was a major again, and a, then Worlds. So good, the only a good bit of those were weakened fields. The only current one that still exists is the two Worlds. Because like he was beating Paul at Aussie Open, but like just Paul. And maybe Eagle, I guess. Yeah, was he that. beat European Masters, um, which was in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, he beat Paul by one out at the European Masters. I but remember that coverage, man. I used Aussie to Open, him time. and Eagle were there. It, it could have been a full field. It didn't matter. They were going course record after course <laughs> record. They were tearing that place up. It's very true. But that is an interesting story line with Rick. Um, when, it, when the dust settles, they're not bringing back the European Masters. They're not bringing back the Aussie Open. They're not bringing back the Japan Open as a ma- major. Yeah, they might. <laughs> the Japan Open's the only one I think on that list that they might bring back as a major. I they, could see the are Aussie they bringing Open, it back. The Japan Open's back. Yeah, but I think it's an A tier. Mm. I could see them bringing any of those tournaments back cool. as like just a pro tour stop or something. But I'm only bringing yeah. them back as a major. So to Ricky, like, gotta start winning. Oh man, we, we gotta got, start. We playing. got an important thing to talk about, and that is the coverage at WR Jackson. Yeah, it was, it's a WR Jackson. It, it's breaking my it, heart. It's breaking my as heart. much as I hate to say the words are about to come out of my mouth. Champions Cup might need a different home. It, it's well, it depends. The course I, is softer yeah. than I ever thought it was. Yeah. Well, I, okay. Multiple guys shot 10, 11, 12, 13. They can. Did someone get to 13? No, people were at 13 and bogeyed. Multiple people were shooting double digits. I don't. So we had a player average double digits to win. I don't like forty under winning a major. I don't. Yeah, and I don't. I don't know if it even had to do with like it wasn't like people were just constantly melting it. It was the fact that like you couldn't go out one day and shoot a fourteen under and have the same chance the next day of shooting a two under because because there's not enough OB. If you're hitting your lines, yeah, you're scoring. O- OB was a and some people probably disagree with this take a lot, but. That, that you know that's something that's popular amongst the pros is like not having OB on a course these days does make things interesting. Yeah, because like when you're scrambling, these guys are so good at hitting their lap. They also 
ten, it looked like they cleared out a lot of the underbrush. These guys are so good at hitting their lines that if they were off the fairway, there wasn't a lot of trouble. I didn't see. No, like, they just were like able to are, get up and down. Guys are punching out, taking like, pars at worst. That course needs bogey. more defense by a long shot. It yeah. needs it needs some of the casual water to be ob. Maybe even those roads that cross. Well, there's one not even and everything th- there's else. not even simple ones like elevated baskets. You know, like there there needs it to be needs a little more defense, defense. But the problem too is it's it got too a, much defense from the cell. Yeah, service. I was gonna say it needs a cell tower. The coverage. And I like to be optimistic about being like, you know what, as long as I can see what's you going on, but you couldn't see what was going on. There were shots. Last year, I think we had the same. We had the It wasn't as bad last year, last year though. It I think last year, my, like, you said something, I was like, but like, you, there was never a point where you didn't, you lost sight of the disc. Like, this time you This did. time you could. Like, there was, yeah. there was moments a where. A lot of times. It looked like I was playing on the N64. Yeah. Like, it was just pixelated. Just drive would be thrown. Where's the shot? Where is it? So many times. And, and the it, commentary wouldn't know. Yeah. It, 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 it was bad, man. It breaks my heart, but like, you cannot have a major championship behind a paywall. Well, that's the other thing. And have that be the product. It, it, you cannot do it. You just It's inexcusable. It's a major. It, you can't do it. So We were doing our companion stream, yeah. which we're going to do for every major, right? And um, first off, shout out to UDisc for working with us and getting scores up during it. I think that was a huge, uh, huge thing there. Yeah, and I was very excited. UDisc. Um, UDisc worked very hard to do that for Where us, actually. Goats. Back and forth was a lot. Um but we were doing our companion stream and we were like setting it up. We were like, oh, wait a second. Like this is only behind a paywall for the final round because the mm-hmm. first round was what was free. And for Pro Tour events, I haven't minded it because I think the Pro Tour, like it's their product. And it is what it is. Like, you well, know, I haven't really had this issue yet. Either. But then it, it hit me like there was only granted Isaac Robinson was up by seven. Four thousand. There was only like four to five thousand people watching the final round live yeah. of a major championship. Mm-hmm. Like Worlds, I think, was getting up to like 10, 12, 16, somewhere in that range, 1,000 people concurrent watching, yeah. which is still in the grand scheme of things small. But like if we're trying it's to make good this... good for live views, If we're though. trying to make this stuff sellable and we're like... I, I agree. I like the strategy to grow the DGN during the season. I don't mind some Pro Tours final round being behind the paywall, first round free. I understand that. I like it. It's okay. I don't think I agree with it for a major. I yeah. think for a major, at least the final round free, at it, least. It's tough because they have to. Del- I mean, yeah. I, I mean, but the big the big issue is. Just well, yeah, the, you got to be able to deliver the, them the, coverage. Yeah, the but. blurriness was it was really bad. But it was kind of depressing. Like you're sharing that moment with only a few thousand other people, and we had several people watching our companion stream, and they were like, "This is all I'm watching. Like, give us a little more play by play because I'm not watching. I I don't have DGN. I'm not going to watch it." <laughs> and like so they were watching our companion stream because they wanted to watch live yeah and they were watching the scores on there and hearing us talk about what happened but like yeah it, it was it was tough it, it was a really really laggy really blurry stream and I mean, they're in the woods and like this is what we always kind of say but like i don't think idlewild is this bad idlewild is not northwood's black's worse well, yeah northwood's black is just there, there needs to be serious like the thing about the the dgn network coverage is they do for what budget and what kind of infrastructure they have it's a miracle the, the stream they run and most of the time it is it's amazing it's really great but when you have such a bottlenecked process and you're so limited in the resources you have you need to make sure that every variable you can control you control and location is the biggest one and if you you know it's not like this caught them by surprise. Like they know what their cell reception situation is going to be. They can test these things, and so like I, something's got to happen next year because if like if next year goes on and there's no statement made and they don't even try to do anything, then like because I know they're not going to want to budge that event because it's the PDGA's event. It's at their headquarters. Well, they, they wanted to move it to Deglo, remember, and they moved it back to WR Jackson after there was so much pushback mm, from players and everything. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind for the champions. I mean, it's weird right now because we have... I wanted... I was a huge proponent of wanting it. I think it, if they can... They need to do something to WR to keep it there, in my opinion. Because, like, Champions Cup being home, the course already has history. It has prestige. Yeah. It's close to hard enough. I think we just need a little more OB. Yeah, it could be done. Um, A little trickier greens, and you're there. And we just got to figure out the coverage thing which that is going to be the hardest one so i don't know 
Yeah. Overall, great weekend. Incredible golf from Isaac Robinson. Incredible golf from a lot of people, but it was overshadowed by Isaac Robinson and Christian Tatar. They made everyone else look like they sucked out there at times. Um, not even at times, the whole weekend. And it just made it look like, I mean, is anyone else even playing disc golf? It was golf? a different these class two are of disc golf out there. Um, I will be curious. Comment down below if you know if this was the first time that at a major... The, the MPO and FPO winner went wire to wire. It wouldn't surprise me if it's happened before. Back in maybe like, like Paul and Paul Page. Or well, could have been a Val or a Page and a Paul. Yeah, I don't know. It could have happened before, but Paul it's pretty s- unprecedented times in in the current. It days. felt like something that we like always talk about. How like oh, this could happen in FPO, but MPO, there's no way this could ever happen again. Just well, it. We're wrong. Uh, but I will Yet say again. that leaderboard jumbled mess. I mean, mm-hmm. so many storylines on there. Hopefully, you enjoyed yeah. watching. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much for tuning in. We're going to throw it back over, probably for the fan favorite segment of Trevor's Trivia. We are now. I would imagine that's what we're throwing it back to. Maybe the Patreon question of the week. Who knows? You're about to find out. <laughs> all right. And we're back now from that recap. Amazing event. Champions Cup was a uh, dominant performance from Kristen and Isaac. Hopefully you enjoyed that recap. Uh, something we might actually do for like for the majors, at least more often is like our fresh reaction because like everything is so fresh in our mind. We don't uh, forget anything. Um, one last thing I wanted to mention before we get into Trevor's trivia, um, talking about our patrons, Mike Magaway is one of our, our devoted listeners and, um, and Patreon Heiser club members. If you're still listening, uh, Mike and your wife, uh, please let Mike come to the Heiser club championships. Yes, That's please. the message we're sending out. This lets you know how personal we are with the, with the Heiser club. Because <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've been in, in arguments with Mike, uh, with, with Mike's wife, we should yeah. say. So, yeah. So we just had to, we had to put that out there. Yeah. We, um, we love you, Mike. We can't <laughs> wait to see you. <laughs> we're now going to uh, hop into Trevor's trivia. I, you know, I have Connor on here today, so, you know, we got to go into Connor's specialty, which is discs and disc pricing. I just love the Frisbees, man. Um, so that's, that's how we're going to roll. Basically the way this game is going to work. It's going to be a combination of some games I've done before, kind okay. of like a Price is Right situation, but a little different. Basically, you remember when we kind of did the, I think it was a Christmas gift situation where I had you like search keywords uh-huh. and like pick a number and that was the yeah, disc yeah, you got. Yeah. So this is the way it's going to work. Okay. You're going to get a progressively more expensive price range and then you are going to get a, you're going to have a search and then a number of, like for the search result and you need to fall within that price range. You get okay. three strikes Okay. and you're trying to get as far up the ladder as possible. Okay. So your, This is tough. This your is tough. Your first search. On eBay? Yes. Your first search is in the zero to $10 range. You can get- Zero to $10 I will range. say you get four keywords. <laughs> Ten dollars. It's mean, probably the easiest one, just because, like, well, it's not the easiest. It's, it's not. I don't know how. The I don't next know one how much. The easiest, but I don't know how much DX is anymore because it used to be ten. So I'd imagine it's more now. But if you search like used, if you search used DX, uh, you're probably golden. Yeah, you're definitely right. Unless it's like something collectible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, also, I changed my mind. You get two strikes. Three is too. Okay. Big. All right. All right. All right. You basically. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Okay, then I'll go for this first one. I mean, I want to go with like I know that the remix disc golf, the streamline like mm. underground brand. That's an interesting. One, I yeah. know their baseline ones are under ten dollars, but I don't know. I don't know the names of them, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to say Innova. Okay. Okay. Can I do the first word be used? Sure. Innova, okay, DX, and then what's a disc that wouldn't sneaky have some kind of like rare one or something like that? Valkyrie. <laughs> Use Innova DX Valkyrie, and which number search result would you like? One, nine ninety nine. <sighs> Done it. Uh, you were in pretty good shape because the next that's used? two, three, and four it says pre-owned. Well, two, that's silly. Two, three, and four were all in the right. You guys need to come to Foundation Disc Store. There was a sneaky like bar stamp one for forty, like oh. sneaked in there. All right, you got the first one. The next okay. window is from ten to twenty. Ten to twenty dollars. All right, I'm going a okay. Let's not go. I think if I just go for a DX disc, or I can just go like Discraft Soft Zone. That's what I'm going. A Discraft. Um, Soft zone. What's the um? 
what's the baseline of, well, of it's putter blend? It's soft. Uh, yeah. So just Wait. go putter blend then. Putter blend zone. Putter blend zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because used to be pro D. Putter but blend I don't know. It's, yeah. zone. And which number would you like? I think I want to go one again. I, I go. Yeah, go one. Nineteen ninety nine. Oh my! That for a putter was, blend well, zone, it was pulling up rubber blend zones from Ledge Zone oh, this year. That's what it was pulling up. It goodness, then that one cent is getting me on. All these right, ones. two for two though. Woo-hoo. All right, twenty to thirty. Twenty to thirty. All right, I'm going. Um, go twenty twenty three because I don't want to get an old one in there to get okay. things sneaky. Um, <laughs> I, like I want to go Halo Wraith is what I want to do like a Garrett Girthy Halo okay. Wraith but I'm trying to find a way to not say it to where it would be like a special one I don't really know there is special ones yeah so I'll just go should I go Garrett Girthy Wraith or should I go Halo Wraith probably Halo yeah I'll go Halo Wraith it's 2023 Halo Wraith do you want to add Innova in there just put yeah yeah duh Innova because I'm scared if I, if I don't put 2023 there's going to be like a first run one or something like that yeah fair enough so uh, what number do you want? Two. Twenty-one ninety-nine. <sighs> okay. All right. I'm good though, right? This yeah. twenty to thirty. Yeah. Unbelievable. This is a great start. This this game was very fun. <laughs> thirty to forty now. This is where thirty to forty dollars. Tough. All right. All right. I'm now you go. can't have anything retail. Priced. I'm good. I feel because I want to go six claw. I think. Ooh. Because the six claws aren't. I think they were going for about forty right okay. after sale. I don't think they're going for crazy okay. right now. But that's a that's a risk. So you want discraft six claw. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna use one of my. I'm gonna see if I like use one of my strikes. I'm gonna go discraft six claw. Was well, a not super popular one because we got we got the buzz, we got the onyx, we got the luna, we got the, un- the Zeus. Zeus. Let's go. I mean, the buzz is gonna be popular. The luna. This is the zone. Let's go luna. I like that actually. I really like that. Yeah. And which number do you want? Two. I like two. I'm, I'm gonna have to find the second Maybe one three. on here. Ah, do I want to go two or three? I'll go two. I'm sticking to two. Come on, give me good news. I I feel like I should. I need to. The problem is I okay. These ones that the, it's not a buy it now. Mm. So let me. Oh, it's like a bidding on so it. So let me find the second buy it now. To be fair, like, yeah, dude. Mm. <sighs> we might get sneaky here. Mm. Not. Not good. Twenty three ninety nine. Dang. Yeah. Surpri- I was kind of. I mean, surprising. It was, it was a though. good. It was a good guess. It was They're a good selling guess. at retail price still. There's still too many in circulation. Okay, that's one strike. Dang. Oh yeah, duh. There's still the people still have them. Yeah. And now we move on to. That's we're so gonna dumb. keep moving up though. Okay. We're, okay. That's we're right. gonna go to the forty to fifty. Forty to fifty dollars. A. This is a tough one. Forty to fifty dollars. That is. This is. I feel like this might be. I mean, thirty to forty was tough because I know, like, uh, I I think I want to go like a, just say, how much is, do OG get freakies go for? They go for, wait, do they go for more than that? Or I don't know. I have no idea anymore. That like they could go for any number. It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> they used to be really expensive, but they okay, don't. that's what we're gonna we're gonna try that. I want to go because yeah, I can't tell if it's gonna go for crazy, but I think I think if I go, just go. Brody Smith. Brody Smith. OG. OG. Get freaky. That, zone. That's way too many words. How many words you do I get? Four. Four. Okay. Uh Brody. Discraft. Okay. Discraft. OG. OG. Get freaky zone. That'd be five. Get freaky is two words. <laughs> you could just say get freaky. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. This could pull up it. anything on eBay. I'm terrified. <laughs> and I'm going with number. Three. Number three is seventy five dollars. Dang it. Wah, wah. Dang it. It started getting tough. There I will say this. OG get freakies to some extent have held value. There's some some expensive ones. Was but, there any in the price range? Uh in forty to fifty, not for a while. You had a quite a few that were way over list I mean listed for way more than that. Um well, Dang. You, you had a good start. Tough that was run. tough. Those me it, to pick an actual price range here's, and say ones in there it was way harder. Than here's I was the thing: be. is 
disc golf the disc golf market is so unpredictable now that that those games have become a lot harder. Yeah, but it's fun though. There's no because tell. Hard. You did a good job. To I feel get, like with those, those I at least couple. I at least have good like reason. Like I like my my thought process is at least good to where I'm not embarrassing myself with. The thought oh no no, which is good. I feel like there's a lot of games where I have no idea what to do. But yeah. whenever with discs, I always feel comfortable with the discs. I don't know why they just you yeah. know. I'm comfortable with them. Well, that's going to be it for the show. It feels weird for me saying that because we've been recording for like 15 minutes yeah. and it's because we filmed most of it last night. So yeah. that's it for Grip Lock. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, we will be with you this week later for a preview show. Um, I believe it's Jonesboro that they're headed to next. Oh, gosh. I better fact check myself. Uh, I think we're going to have Hunter probably call in. He's gone all Heck week, yeah. but we'll probably have Hunter call in for that. Um so don't worry, all you Hunter fans. We will have him for Big Hunt. the preview show. Uh, yes, Jonesboro, and it'll be coming out on Thursday because it is a three-day tournament. So we will see you then. And yeah, that's it.